The next version, 1.3 of Stoll GKS, will come with a new view that introduces a lot of new features that help you to become even more productive. In this video, I would like to give you a quick overview. The first feature that you may notice is that now every knitting piece has its own frame. This is very helpful to identify which part belongs to which knitting piece, especially in case that they overlap. However, you can change the appearance of the frames according to your likes. Pressing J on the keyboard toggles between the different appearances. There are four possibilities. First one is showing the frames, including their header. The second one is showing only the headers. In this case, the frame will appear whenever you enter the frame of a piece. Third one is showing no header and no frame at all. In this case, the header and the frame will appear whenever you enter the piece. And the last one is showing only the frames. In this case, if whenever you enter the frame, the header will appear. A knitting piece can be moved around just like an ordinary window. Just grab it on its header and drag it around with the left mouse button. For convenience, we have also introduced a way to drag around the knitting piece from inside the frame. But since inside the frame the left mouse button has other functions, in this case you have to use the middle mouse button to drag it around. And in case that your mouse doesn't support a middle mouse button, you have to use Control, Shift and left mouse button to drag it around. We have also improved the visualization of how well defined your shape is. Let's have a look at a new fabric piece. As you can see, the fabric piece comes without any measurement at all. All the points are not filled, which means that they have maximum freedom, they could be anywhere. As soon as I bring in a new measurement, for example in horizontal direction, there is one degree of freedom less, so the points cannot move anymore in horizontal direction, but they still can move in vertical direction. That means that there is still one degree of freedom on that point. If I bring in another measurement in vertical dimension, you can see that the points now change to filled with blue color. That means that this point is very well defined, it has no degree of freedom neither in vertical nor in horizontal direction. And if you have a look at these shapes, you can see that all the points are filled, which means that they are all very well defined because they have no degree of freedom neither in horizontal nor in vertical direction. And in case that you detect any point which is not filled, you easily can identify that this point has a measurement missing. This is very important if it comes to grading. Before doing grading next sizes, you should ensure that your initial size has all points filled with blue color, so that every point has zero degree of freedom. This is very important so that the grading calculation process can move the points in a very defined manner. We have also emphasized two special points. One is the starting point, which is the origin of the coordinates, and one is the ending point where the two shape halves come together. The starting point is also the anchor for the symmetry axis. You can show or hide the symmetry axis by clicking this option in the status bar. While the starting point always goes through the symmetry axis, the end point not necessarily goes through the symmetry axis, depending on whether you have a symmetric shape or an asymmetric shape. A very helpful feature is that we now always indicate situations when a shape point cannot meet its measurement due to the underlying line properties. Let's have a look at this curved armhole line. This is specified like that. If I change the value of this stepping from 1 to 3, then the line becomes different. And in this case, the line forces this point to move its location to here, while the measurement wants this point to be here. This situation cannot be solved by the system because of the conflict between the line specification and the measurement. So this is always indicated in this way that the red point indicates where the measurement wants the point to be, and the blue line, the blue point indicates where the line specification wants it to be. You can now easily check your shapes for conflicting points.
Another very useful feature is the detection of the relationship between measurements and the relationship between knitting points and measurements. You might already know the feature that if you are touching a measurement with a mouse, all the related measurements will be highlighted. So these highlighted measurements are related in some way with a formula. What is new in GKS 1.3 is that if you touch a point with your mouse, then you will see the connected measurements. So you can easily detect which measurement is related with which point. In GKS 1.3 only main dimensions are shown as a solid line. If you switch on all the other dimensions you will see that they are indicated by a dashed line. A very nice feature of the new GKS version is the way how you can do selections. To select knitting pieces you start drawing a selection area outside the knitting piece frame. And every knitting piece that is touched by the drawing area or by the selection area will be part of the selection. You can now drag around the selected group of knitting pieces. To select objects inside a knitting piece you have to start the selection area inside a knitting piece. Every object that is touched by the selection area will be part of the selection. You can also select individual objects by clicking them with the control key pressed. Selecting multiple objects is very helpful if you want to move them as a group or if you want to delete them altogether. If you, for example, select these two points, you can move them as a group all together. Or if you select these two measurements, you can move them as a group. If you select these two points, you can delete them all together. The selection tool also implements an auto-scroll feature. So in case that your shapes are outside the viewport, for example like that, and you open a selection and you hit the border of the window, then the auto scroll will be initiated. Version 1.3 introduces a new feature to sum up the length of various lines. Have a look at this symbol here at the status bar. If you select various lines, then the length of all these lines is summed up here in this value. For example, if you want to know the length of the armhole, you just open a selection frame and touch all the lines that contribute to the armhole and you will see the length here in this value. Knitting instructions are greatly improved in version 1.3. Not only that they are grouped together, they also show the fade out width, the type of narrowing and the narrowing width. You can select each knitting instruction individually or as a group and move them to the position as you like. Changing dimensions has been made more user-friendly in this new version. Double-click on a value and you will get a pop-up window with all relevant values, the measurement and the correction values. This means less mouse movement and less clicks. Another improvement of productivity is the new way how to create sizes. Instead of having to go to the ribbon bar, and press the right mouse button for adding new sizes. You can now do the same by clicking with the right mouse button on the background and add new sizes. The new sizes will show up as floating buttons on the right upper corner. You can now easily switch between the different sizes. We have also improved the way how you can hide or show individual knitting pieces. Before you had to open the fabric pieces and sizes dialog and then select or deselect the knitting pieces. Now you can do the same by clicking on the header of a knitting piece with the right mouse button and select hide fabric piece. The fabric piece will hide on the bottom of the window. To show the knitting piece again, just click on its Maximize icon. There is a new functionality to rearrange the knitting pieces in a window. If for example you show the knitting instructions, then every frame of each individual knitting piece becomes bigger. 
However, it makes sense not to rearrange automatically the knitting pieces because if you sh hide again the knitting instructions, then every knitting piece is perfectly on the place where it was before. But if you want to show the knitting instructions permanently, then this arrangement is not useful anymore. Now just click with the right mouse button on the background and click Auto Arrange Fabric Pieces. And everything will be rearranged in a new order so that you can see everything perfectly. The performance of the new version has been greatly improved. Scrolling and zooming is very fast, no matter of the amount of information that is shown on the view. In this version we also change the behavior of the drawing tools. If you selected a drawing tool from the ribbon bar before, it was only working for the next drawing step. If you wanted the tool to work for multiple drawing steps, you had to double click it on the ribbon bar. In the new version, now the single click on the ribbon bar selects the tool permanently. The double click is gone in this version. So for example, if I select the tool for horizontal dimensions with a single click on the ribbon bar, I can use it for one dimension and another dimension as long as the tool stays selected. If I want to use a drawing tool only for the next drawing step, I can select it from the context menu. For example, if I want to set a vertical dimension once, I select it from the context menu, then set the dimension and then the drawing tool switches back to the selection drawing tool. We think that this is much more user friendly as it was before. Since the drawing tool for setting dimensions is very commonly used, there is a shortcut for it. Pressing the less than key on the keyboard activates the horizontal dimension tool. This shortcut also has a second meaning. If you set a dimension, for example in horizontal direction, but you intentionally want to do it in a vertical direction, you can toggle the directions with the less than key on the keyboard. You may have already noticed that the echo of the drawing tools for horizontal and vertical dimensions now clearly show in which direction the measurement is going. So for example, if you set a horizontal measurement, the echo is pure horizontal. This also applies if you copy the dimension then you also see that this dimension is a pure horizontal dimensioning. This was a summary of the new features and improvements of Stoll GKS 1.3. We hope you enjoy them, give it a try and we are happy to hear your feedback. Thanks a lot for your attention.